Thanks so for coming. Um, my name is Michelle Glager. I'm the CEO of BioGrow New Zealand um, and I'm going to talk today about the future of organics and why GE is bad for New Zealand as far as we're concerned for organics. So just a little bit to start with about who we are. Um, I'm from BioGrow New Zealand as I said. We're New Zealand's leading organic certifier. We certify to domestic and overseas markets and um, we have uh, certification services in New Zealand and in the Asia Pacific region. We have our own standards, the BioGro Organic Standards. So something that a lot of people don't realise is we're actually owned by society. It's the New Zealand Biological Producers and Consumers Society and it's a not-for-profit incorporated society that was set up um, almost 30 years ago. Next year is our 30th anniversary and we were set up really to promote organic production and to provide a credible certification system in New Zealand. Um, and organics is our focus, that's what we, the space that we occupy. If you want to find out a bit more about us, you can go to our website, that's um, biogrow.co.nz and we've also got a Facebook presence because we're really modern like that. Anyway. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, we live in a really rapidly changing world. Um, new technologies, access to um, lots more information than we ever imagined possible, instant communications, and with the patterns that don't um, make any sense anymore, the storms that just hit over in New York, and also um, lots of consumerism. So where does organic fit in this world? You know, is organic just the sort of a dinosaur from a, a previous, um, a previous century, which is in the way of modern new technologies? So, um, we also know that um, organics doesn't deliver. That's what we learned from a, a recent study that was publicised in all the headlines. Organic food study from the Sanford study claims organic food isn't really better for you. So according to the study that um, research has found that actually it isn't better for you. But like all things, if you um, look at the fine print and take a closer look at results and I actually have a science background so I kind of like to get in, stuck in and check out the, my own facts and if you look really closely the results of this review, it's probably a little bit small for you to see, actually said that um, organic foods consistently contain fewer pesticide residues and antibiotic resistant bacteria. So it's really interesting that, this, that all the headlines chose to focus on a negative aspect of organic rather than actually highlighting some of the more positive things that actually it does contain less pesticides and there are benefits. So I could spend the next 20 minutes um, refuting every claim that organic is less nutritious or it's more expensive and it's less productive and also um, that it's not going to be the solution to feeding the world. But um, in actual fact I'd like to talk more about what organics actually means so that you can be an informed uh, consumer and you can make your own choice about it. Because I think that's um, really what it's about, it's about your choice. So whether I'm a scientist or whether I'm a CEO of BioGrow, whether I'm a mother, I've got two, two teenage daughters, um, a consumer or, or whatever other hat I wear, I think it's really important to have a choice. So let's start with the definition. And um, I'm quite often asked to say, what's organics all about in a sentence? Well, <laughs> actually it's quite hard to do in a sentence, either that or you have to have really, really big lungs. So um, here's the definition that um, we like to use. It was um, agreed upon by the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements, that's an umbrella organisation for organics internationally. And their definition goes like this. Organic agriculture is a production system that sustains the health of the soil, ecosystems and people, it relies on ecological processes, biodiversity and cycles adapted to local conditions rather than the use of inputs with adverse effects. Organic agriculture combines traditional innovation and science to benefit the shared environment and promote fair relationships and a good quality of life of all involved. So, interesting. Um, it's not just about no pesticides or herbicide, that's quite a common misconception that people have. As you can see that's only a small part of what organics means. Um, it's also generally agreed that um, once organic produce leaves the farm, its integrity is protected and further packaging and processing needs to minimise any, um, any um, unnecessary additives and to maximise the quality and nutritional value of the organic product. Right, so that's good, we've got a definition now. So. Um, that's a bit open to interpretation, so we have standards 
to be able to provide rules around what we mean by that definition. And I call these rules cookbooks because it actually is where you find the detail about what you can and can't do. Um, these are our own private standards, the BioGrow standards, and they're best based on principles of what our society have determined as important for organic. So we have a set of about eight principles and the standards are built around those principles. Um, in many overseas countries, um, they have standards and um, regulations defining organics. And the interesting thing about those standards, working with them, is that they're actually consumer labelling standards. And that means that they're based on what consumer expectations are of what organics is and what would, what would happen in the organic production system, rather than um, a private standard like this, which is based on a sort of a, a ground up principle. So you, you often get quite illogical and, and practical things appearing in um, market um, access standards, which are regulations for defining organics. Okay, so we've got a definition and we've got a standard. So how do you know what you're buying is organic? Okay, so back in the good old days, um, as, um, you used to be able to go and buy your produce directly from the farmer. So you could look over the fence, you could see that the animals were well treated and well cared for, and you could ask the farmer perhaps how they grew it, so at least you know that what you're buying met your expectations of organic. Well, um, you can still, I suppose, experience that to a certain extent. You can go to farmers markets, and, and the, a lot of farmers markets have requirements that the people who are selling the produce are the people who have grown it, and so you can have a conversation with them and you can have establish that same sort of trust around it. But um, increasingly these days, you're making purchases from a retailer, so there's a separation between the farmer and your purchasing. And quite often also what you get is um, a distributor in the middle as well. So. Um, how can you be sure it's organic? Because when you buy it from the retailer, it's um, far removed from its original source. So, you know, we're a very trusting lot in New Zealand. So, um, and we believe that actually if someone claims something is organic, that it must be organic. And we are protected by the rule. Well, actually, um, this is the organic labelling situation in New Zealand. It's not regulated by, um, by regulation. In other words, anyone can slap organic on their product and it doesn't have to have any independent validation that it is really organic. So um, there's an increased um, requirements from regulatory bodies to substantiate any claims so that if you find someone who is um, claiming organic, the requirement on them is that they have to be able to substantiate that. Now that's, um, it can be quite challenging. So um, a much easier way to be able to know whether what you buy is organic is through certification. I'll just take a breather here. I've got a bit out of sync with my notes. <laughs> okay. So, if, if you're buying a product and it's got a certification mark, that's your way of being assured that it meets a recognised standard. And so, you know, we would encourage people when they are buying organic product to make sure that you asked for a certification logo and if they don't have certifications, to ask them what they mean by organic. Um, because it, what you'll find is that everyone has a slightly different definition of organic and you might be buying something that's not really meeting what your expectation is. The other thing to note is that people who are certified, they have to be um, they have to go through a process of um, being assessed, that we have, they have to supply us their full management plan, which we assess, and then we also have an on-site audit that we do to confirm that they're meeting what they said they were going to be doing in their organic management plan. And that happens every year. Oops, sorry. Okay, right. Right, so as consumed, con concerned consumer, we want to do the right thing and make purchases decisions that support our principles. So in recent years there have been a proliferation of eco-labels to allow you to do this. So um, maybe your preferences for choosing things that are environmentally produced, in which case you know, these are some logos that you might be looking for for certifications like uh, um, Rainforest Alliance or Carbon Zero, or perhaps um, what you're actually really concerned about is fairness, so you might be looking for something that has fair trade certification. Um, increasingly in the last um, few years, free range has become really important. And so um, SBCA, that's a logo you can look for to make sure that your animals are being well treated. Um, I think probably um, one of the interesting things about this is that often people are making these decisions believing that they're doing this in, as a, a, a choice 
rather than purchasing organic. So maybe you're at the supermarket and there's two brands of coffee, one is fair trade and one is organic. And you say, well, I think I'll support fair trade because um, it's really important to me that people are treated um, ethically, so I'm going to make a fair trade purchase. Um, but what we fail to see is actually that organic encompasses a lot of those principles. And that's probably a reflection of the poor marketing that we've done in the organic industry, not to actually to make, educate people about that holistic meaning of organics. Because if you remember my definition, it talks about many other aspects, not just about the pesticides and residues. So you know, from my perspective, actually, that you, know, you can choose all those things. There are really valuable decisions to make, but you can also choose organic, because by choosing organic, you're actually not just dealing with one particular focus, you're actually dealing with and um, buying into a whole range of um, good practices. Uh, the other thing too is just to realise that with those, some of those other programmes, even though they might be supporting practices like sustainability, they might actually have other practices that are not quite so desirable. I know with the um, sustainable wine growers, quite a few sustainable wine grower um, products are, uh, are grown with very widespread use of Roundup. So is that really what you're buying into when you purchase something like that? Right, so there's lots of good reasons to choose organics, um, and I've talked about some of the positive aspects, but there's actually um, one practice that we feel very, very strongly about, and that's about GMOs. In fact, under our standards, they're explicitly prohibited. So it's not even something that we discourage, it's actually something that we do not allow at all. So genetic engineering or genetic modified organisms, organisms and their derivatives are expressly prohibited in an organic standards. So what's this that GMO um, claims to do that can't be met with organics? Well, GMOs are promoted with quite wide-reading um, claims, and they sound pretty good, actually. So extension of natural breeding, don't possess any specific risks, um, safe to eat, safe, strictly regulated, get much more crop yields, reduce pesticides, benefit farmers, brings economic benefits, benefit the environment, helps solve problems that we get from climate change, reduce energy um, use, and my favourite, will help to feed the world. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Um, unfortunately, there's a large and growing body of scientific evidence that refutes these claims. And um, we also know that conventional breeding, using some of the more modern techniques, can get just as good a results or even better. There's no need to take these risks with GM crops when we've got some really effective and reliable other ways of growing our crops. And most importantly, consumers don't want it. In fact, there's a lot of consumer pressure to have GE um, labelling on products. That's specifically because consumers want to avoid those products. So um, I'm not going to go into any specific details about you know, refuting these claims, but these, these are some really great websites that you can go to if you want to look for um, how those claims have been refuted. So gefriend.org.nz, that's a New Zealand um, organisation that's actively lobbying against GE. Um, Organic NZ, that's a Soil and Health Association website. And um, earthopensource.org, that has a very, very good document about um, why GMOs don't deliver on their promises. I would like to focus on one particular issue though, which has a direct input of GMOs on organics, and that's GM contamination. And um, I think this is a very good example of why we shouldn't allow GMs in New Zealand. This is um, what happened in Australia uh, in December 2010. Um, Steve Marsh, an organic grower in Western Australia, discovered uh, GM canola in his growing on his farm. Uh, upon discovering this, he immediately lost his um, certification, or at least it was suspended, and um, they later confirmed that he did actually have com um, contamination from GM in crops. He believed it spread from his neighbour's property, and it spread to almost over half his farm. He had to have his, um, had to have his organic status removed, and um, the most incredible thing about this whole story is that the organic industry is being blamed for the situation by setting a zero tolerance for GMOs. So because the standards don't allow any um, contamination from GMOs, therefore it was our problem that this occurred. 
and their solution to allow a percentage of um, adventitious GMOs into organic products, which is um, a fairly scary if that's forced upon us. As you can see, it's, it's very, it can have a, quite an adverse effect allowing GMOs. Um, fortunately, it's not too late in New Zealand. We don't currently have any commercial GM crops being grown in New Zealand. Um, it's not compatible with our branding that we use, which is 100% pure New Zealand. Um, we know consumers don't want it, they don't want GMOs grown here, they don't want to buy GMOs, and they don't think it should be part of New Zealand's agriculture. So why would we go down that path? Um, what we do need though is we need support of our organic producers. We need people to be voting with their wallet and supporting organic producers. And we also need consumers to be voicing their, um, um, their um, rejection of GMOs. I think we all forget how powerful consumers can be as a lobby group. So there's a lot that you can do just by challenging and um, questioning why we need GMOs in New Zealand. Um, next to think, just to finish off, I don't actually think we need to get bogged down in lots of arguments or the science of whether GMO is better or worse or organics is better or worse. I actually don't think it's that complicated. As far as I'm concerned, it comes back to having a choice. And it's where I started, a choice to be able to choose to buy organic produce. And by allowing GMOs, that compromises that choice that you have. So, that's it.